Good morning students. Welcome to the statistics class. In the previous class, I have explained to you regarding the tests that are involved in identifying the best index numbers or the ideal index numbers. I have explained to you how to do the testing theoretically. I have explained to you what are those four tests. Number one is a unit test. Number two is the time reversal test. Number three is the factor reversal test. And number four is the uh, circular test. So these are the four tests that are uh, there for us. And we have to use this test to identify which is the best index number. There are various index numbers that we have come across all these uh, previous classes. You have, you have come to know that and there are various index numbers and each index numbers gives us uh, different answers. So which is the best one to identify? So we will not be able to understand unless and until we do the testing. So when we do the test and when they surpass or when they overcome the test and when they pass in the test, then we can say that particular index number is the best or the ideal index number. So like that we have done and I have showed it to you and, and I explained to you that there are some index numbers which satisfies and which doesn't satisfy. And, and I have showed it to you all that uh, theoretically now, <clears throat> numerically, I need to explain to you with this problem, specific problem students. So the problem is on the screen, okay? You can very well see that the problem is on the screen. So the problem says that compute Fisher's index, Fisher's price index, and show that it satisfies, uh, show that it satisfies time reversal and factor reversal test. It's very clearly being mentioned that we need to we need to identify we need to first calculate uh, the time reversal. The first we have need to calculate Fisher's index number, and then we have to cal uh, we have to show that they satisfy time reversal test and factor reversal test. So the data is given to us students here. So what is the data that is shown to us here? is they have given us the first column as items and the second column is of 2004. This is 2004. Now this 2004 is the base year for us. 2006 is the current year for us. Okay, you know base year is denoted as zero and current year is denoted as one. So on that basis, they have given us price of the base year. So we can denote this, this column as P, not students and we can denote this column as q not why p not p indicates price and zero indicates base year 2004 q indicates quantity and zero indicates it's for the base year and 2006 is a current year price of the current year is p1 students and quantity of the current year is q1 so there are four columns that is required for us p0 q0 p1 q1 so these are four columns that are required to do the testing based on these then we can start finding out the values that are required the terms that are required and based on that, we can find out Fisher's price index number, and also we can and show we can we can show the that it satisfies time reversal test. So we have uh, these students. Let me show it to you, or let me write it to you. What is the first of the formula of Fisher's price index number? What is the formula of Fisher's price index number, students? Fisher's price index number. Okay. What is that uh, formula that we have? The formula that we have is, okay, it's given as P01. Is that right, students? P01. And P01 is equal to, right, P01 is equal to root of, is it right, root of summation P1Q0 divided by summation P0 Q0 into summation P1 Q1 divided by summation P0 Q1. 
this all these things under one root students this all comes under one root into unread is it right so this is what is fisher's price index number so now what we need to do is we need to find out these values students this is p1 q0 we need to find out p1 q1 we need to find out p0 q1 we need to find out and p0 q1 we need to find out so what we do is let's find out these values students let's find out these values and write down here the column first column what is it what is that we need to find out we need to write out p1 q0 we need to find out the next is p0 q0 we need to find out the next is p1 q1 we have to find out is it right and the last one is what students and the last one that we need to find out is p0 q1 okay so when we find out all these values what is this the product of the current year price into the base year quantity this is the first one second column is the product of base year price and base year quantity the third column is current year price the product of current year price and current year quantity and the fourth column is base year price product of base year price and current year quantity so these all four columns values that we need to find out students so let's do that fine let's do the findings okay so we'll start with the first one that is p1 q0 p1 q0 what is that p1 q0 of the first item p1 is 9 and q0 is 15 p1 is 9 and q0 is 15 so what is the answer that we get we get as 135 this is 135 students okay the next one is 8 into 8 into 12 students 8 into 12 uh, what we get is 96 students this is 96 is it right the next is 10 into 10 10 into 10 is equal to 100 students okay this is 100 okay the next one is 15 into 14 students is 210 this is 210 okay so when we add up all those four values okay so we'll be getting some answer as 541 students and what is this this is summation p1 q0 okay likewise p0 q0 students p0 q0 what is that p0 q0 we have to do it that is uh, 8 into 15 is 120 students 120 then 7 into 12 is how much 84 84 okay then we have 10 into 10 okay it is 100 okay the next is 12 into 14 is 168 and then when we add all these we get 472 students this is 472 what is this 472 this is summation p naught q naught students okay then p1 q1 that is 9 into 9 into 15 is 135 okay 135 135 students then we have 8 into 13 is 104 104 okay then 10 into 10 is 100 okay this is 100 okay then we have 15 into 16 is 240 this is 240 so when we add all these what we get is 579 students this is 579 what is this this is sum of p1 q1 likewise p not q1 p not q1 the uh, first column that is 8 into 15 8 into 15 you get 120 this is 120 students then 7 into 13 7 into 13 is 91 91 then we have 10 into 10 is 100 100 
and last one that is 12 into 16 16 is 192 students this is 192 so when we add all that we get answer as 5 5 not 3 students what is this this is summation p not q1 okay so when we have all these values for us students let's substitute them here let's substitute those values here in this formula okay so then we will be able to understand what we need to do it so i'll write it as this is all under one root okay that is 541 541 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 503 this whole thing in 200 students okay so when once we do it so what will happen to the students let's see 541 divided by 541 divided by 472 is equal to we get as 1.1461 1. I'll take only four digits students I'll take only four digits the next one is 579 579 divided by 503 you get it 579 divided by 503 is equal to 1 point is equal to 1.1 510 right this is what uh, we have it and in 200 okay so I'll multiply this with okay 1.1461 1 uh, okay 1.1461 uh, into 1.1510 I get that as I'll be getting it as is equal to okay all under one root that is 1.3191 1 into 100 so the root of this students the root of uh, this if I just take it up okay okay right I'll, I'll continue your calculation that is root of 1.13 uh, is I get answer as 1.1485 1 into 100 and then I'm, when I multiply with 100 I'll be getting it as 114.85 percent this is what is is Fisher's price index number students so they asked us to do this for this students when we do this calculation of students you'll be getting two marks remember this for all this calculation you'll be getting two marks one for the formula here and one for the answer here okay so that way we have to do this so now when we go back and see the table students when we go back and see this uh, tables see here what uh, what we have it here is this tables for this value for this particular value we'll be getting one mark for this one mark for this one mark and for this one mark so all together this will give you four marks students four marks this will be one mark and then the answer for that Fisher's index number would be giving you as another one six marks we have done now for the next one is uh, we have to think about the time reversal test so now I will do the time reversal test here students what does this time reversal test mean for us time reversal test what does the time reversal test mean so here uh, we have to use the values and then uh, prove that Fisher's index number satisfies time reversal test so what is it says the TRT requires this is how we have to write students the TRT requires it requires okay the formula that we have to write that is P01 into P10 is equal to 1 this is important students for this we'll be getting one mark P01 into P10 is equal to 1 
So what is that P01 students? This is only what we need to do is only we need to use the ratios that is summation P1 Q0 divided by summation P0 Q0 into summation P1 Q1 divided by summation P0 Q1. So we'll substitute the values students. We'll substitute what are those values that is 541 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 503. This is what is P01. So P10, what is P10? It's only just changing of the times. That is summation P0 Q1 divided by summation P, P1 Q1 into summation P0 Q0 divided by summation P1 Q0. What did I do is, I just simply changed. Wherever I got 1, I put 0. Wherever I have 0, I put 1. So on that basis, what would be this? So it is P1, P0, Q1. P0, Q1 is how much? It is 503. 503 and P1, Q1 is how much? 579. 579. Then P0, Q0 is 472 and divided by it is 541. So all this is, again, uh, when we just see, we just go back and uh, put everything under one root, under one root, that is P01 into P10 is equal to root of, when we do it, all those things under one root, so it would be 541 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 503 into 503 divided by 579 into 472 divided by 541. So all that when we do it here, so it will be something like this. So 541 gets cancelled with 541. 579 gets cancelled with 579. 503 gets cancelled with 503 and 472 gets cancelled with 472. All the terms gets cancelled. What will be left out is only 1 on root of 1 is 1. Hence, hence Fisher's index, Fisher's index satisfies, satisfies TRT. Is that clear students this is how we do about the time reversal test so now what I do is the same thing I will do it here for the factor reversals test students the factor reversal test what would be the factor reversal test the factor reversal test so the factor reversal test is given as reversal test Again, we need to write this students like this and what it requires, FRT requires, FRT requires, this is important for us, okay, so we need to write this, that is P01, okay, P01 into uh, Q01 is equal to V01, okay, what is that V01, that is P1 Q1 divided by summation P0 Q1 not okay so p01 students the same thing is applied p01 if you just look into that p01 what is it summation p1 q0 divided by summation p0 q0 into summation p1 q1 divided by summation p0 p0 q1 so when we substitute those values here students what are those values that we have it here okay I just uh, go back and check those values Okay, that is 541. This is 541. Okay, this is 541 divided by, um, okay, 472. 541 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 5 3. Okay, this is what it is. So now, Quantity index number students. Quantity index number now here we have to change interchange price into quantity, quantity into price that is Q1 P0 divided by summation Q0 P0 into summation Q1 P1 divided by summation Q0 P1. 
So substitute those values. How can we substitute? We didn't calculate. Now Q1 P0 is the same as P0 Q1. P0 Q1 is 503 students. Is it right? Okay. Then Q0 P0, P0 Q0, it is one and the same. It is 472 students. Okay. Into summation Q1 P1 or P1 Q1 is one and the same. That is 579 divided by summation uh, summation p1 q0 or q0 p1 p1 q0 is one and the same as 541 students so all under one root that is p01 into q01 i'll put them all under one root on all under one root that is 541 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 503 into 503 divided by 472 into 579 divided by 541 all under one root students so what gets cancelled is 541 and 541 gets cancelled 503 503 gets cancelled so when then they get cancelled what is left out here is for us what is left out here is it will be 579 okay divide by uh, 579 twice two times in the numerator and 472 also two times in the denominator here is 1472 here is 1472 here is 4 579 579 so both is square root gets cancels right is it right square root gets cancels okay square root gets cancels here this square root and this gets cancels what will be left out is 579 divided by 472 now what is this 579 total 579 is summation p1 q1 and what is this 472 it is summation p0 q0 which is equal to value index number students hence hence fisher's fisher's index number right satisfies R T students okay I hope you have understood this is all about uh, uh, this is FRT students so don't get confused so this is how we do the testing and uh, please watch this video once again and uh, it will be very much helpful for you in the next class we will look into these some other problems thank you thank you very much